to another episode of our mini podcast, I Built a Company That Makes a Difference by B1. Here we talk to founders of sustainable businesses to get their takes on how and why they started their companies and lessons that they learned along the way. Today, I have the great pleasure of talking with Divya Alter, a celebrated plant-based chef, a restaurant owner, and entrepreneur who roots all of her cooking in Ayurveda. You can find her online at divyas.com which is the hub for all of her businesses. And this includes a plant-based restaurant in New York City, cooking classes, and an online shop to buy packaged food items like one-pot meals, soups and sauces, and even tea and skincare. As a brand, Divya's is on a mission to help people find joy, nourishment, and balance through food. Divya, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, Amber, thank you so much for having me. It's such, such a pleasure to speak with you today. I'm super excited about this conversation because you are uh, like a super entrepreneur. You've got a lot of projects on and we're going to dig into them. But first, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Yes. Well, I was born in Bulgaria uh, back in communist time. And um, it was I had a very happy childhood. But one thing that I really appreciate about my upbringing is that our life was simple. And it was very close to nature. So I'm very grateful to my parents to instill this in me from early childhood to feel a part of nature, to be in. We spent so much time out in nature. My grandparents used to live in the mountains and we'll be out every weekend. So that love for nature, appreciation for nature, feeling part of nature um i've had since my early childhood i'm very grateful otherwise i i i live in new york city with my husband prentice is his name and we started um something interesting about me before i got into business both my husband and i were monks <laughs> we, we lived very simple austere spiritual lives we focused on our spiritual practice since the age of 18 we lived in ashrams and chanted and meditated we still do that by the way but we do it in a different setting so um it was kind of like a military training in a sense because we learned discipline and self-control and sticking to our core values and um connecting to appreciating and connecting to higher power so um yeah wow that is <laughs> from amazing. a monk to a businesswoman <laughs> yeah from a monk to a businesswoman and how so you you were a monk from when you were 18 you said yes I was going through an existential crisis and I was like who am I yes <laughs> who am I what is the meaning of my life why am I suffering I was going through all this and I found the answers in Bhagavad Gita and other ancient Vedic texts and this connected me to ancient culture of India which then connected me to Ayurveda which is the medical science of India and then I discovered that I am really interested in using food as medicine and so when you talk about sustainability for me it's like food is meant to sustain life so um and how do you sustain life by staying healthy? So using food, not just to for pleasure and fulfilling your belly, but also to, to really nourish us deeply so that it can sustain us to be and to do what we're meant to do in the world. Wow, there's so many. Cha- your The book of your life is so rich already. So how long did you, uh, were you a monk uh, practicing? I was a monk for 15 years. 15 I lived in, in India. In 15, India. Okay. Five. Yes. <laughs> I'm 50 now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, I, pre- I live, a big part of this is living, it was living in India mm-hmm. because I really wanted to connect with the roots of yoga and India helped me feel and really connect with that deep spirituality that my heart was longing for and um yeah uh, and then i i came to the united states for i was part of a project and then i met my husband who is american and then we were like oh let's get married <laughs> it's like 
so what, what are we going to do? And then we realized that our passion, both of us, was in education. Mm -hmm. And from our culinary educational work, started the restaurant and the product business. And I continue to teach as well. Wow. Okay. So you've been in, in New York for a couple decades now then. More than a decade, yes. More than a decade. Yes, about 14 years. Okay. And I I'm American. I'm based in London, but I'm American. How do you find, I really love this concept. And as a grown-up adult, uh, kind of come into the consciousness, you kind of know it academically or you should eat right. What is right kind of depends on where you are from country to country or part of a country to a part of the country. Um, and you kind of think, okay, preventative yes you it's kind of in your in the context of of busy living but i've kind of as a grown up adult not too long ago come into the really i i need to pay attention seriously to what i'm consuming as a part of um uh being able to age well uh mm -hmm. live longer and prevent disease so how do you find that having you know living in the united states that's not necessarily common practice in the united states for americans no, it's not. <laughs> it depends on also who you hang out with, I would say. But, Very true. But you're so right. You know, I think once you hit 30 years of age, you kind of start to realize, oh, I can't eat whatever. You know, you start to feel it in your body. And nowadays, I mean, so many young people suffer with food allergies, even kids, you know, so um it's just um because our digestive system gets messed up from an early age and then and then you start to from there so many so many imbalances and diseases can grow so um i think like for me it always like change always starts with me i don't and i take responsibility for my own health it's not my doctor who is responsible it's not my husband. It's not my parents. It's I'm responsible for taking care of my health, both mental and physical and spiritual, if, if you want. <laughs> so if I don't take if I don't take action, if I'm not serious about it, then I will I will not feel better. I will get sick. And for me, good health is not it's really a necessity for um as entrepreneurs you know we're very ambitious <laughs> we want to manifest things we want to contribute to the world but how can you do that if you, if your body is, is an impediment if your mind is an impediment to that if you're just the instrument is not working properly so um like for me it's almost like taking care of my health is like I have to do this not just for my own sake, but also as a service to others. Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so from that place, I'm I'm kind of motivated to to take whatever is necessary, to do whatever is necessary, to stay healthy, not go overboard, but you know what's necessary, so that I can be of my best service to others. And then for us who don't know, could you explain a little bit about the foundations of Ayurveda? Yeah, so one of the core principles of Ayurveda is to help us maintain, find our balance and maintain balance, kind of integrate our physical, mental, emotional and spiritual aspects of our lives. So, and it's individual. Ayurveda is a very personalized system. It's not it's not uh it's not just a diet it's not just a lifestyle it's not just herbs and medicines it's all integrated into our life so practicing ayurveda is basically a way of life it's not it's not just doing it when you're sick <laughs> and the personalized i love the personalized approach because as you mentioned in the beginning it's not one yes eating locally is very important. Eating seasonally is very important for health. But then eating according to your body type or according to what's going on for you right now, according to what you can digest right now so that that food can truly nourish it, nourish you and not just go through you. 
so that's the these are the the aspects of ayurveda that kind of go it's like 2.0 of healthy eating and healthy cooking it goes beyond modern what we know of modern nutrition so yeah this is a little bit about ayurveda there is so much more and so when you came to new york when you came to the u.s and you started i love that you kind of at the core of everything that you're doing because you do a lot of things at the core of everything that you're doing you consider yourself an educator uh and, and you want to as you said, change starts with yourself and and uh, responsibility starts with yourself and you want to educate other people and how they might be able to, to harness some of that for themselves. When you first came to the United States and wanted to introduce your cooking, plant-based cooking, uh, rooted in Ayurveda, to was the idea to introduce it to make it very mainstream? Was it just to you know start with a little project here? Did you have a long-term vision when you started or was it like, this is the passion project that I want, just want to get off the ground. How did it start? Well, honestly, I had no idea where this will take me. I We didn't have any projection. I just, I loved cooking. People loved my cooking. And I just started teaching cooking classes. This is how it all started in New York City. My first class had four people. Uh, my one month the next month it had eight people and after four months we had 500 people who signed up for our classes and I was like oh I need to train more people how to teach I cannot handle all that ball, all this influx so so um and then from from there then we realized from there I realized the need it's that I enjoy my healthy cooking because it also helped me overcome an autoimmune disease and other ailments that I was struggling with. But, and I was, and it's not because I was, I was, I was eating plant-based diets before I got sick for like 20 years and I still got very sick for other causes. So you can be vegan or plant vegetarian doesn't necessarily mean you're eating healthy. And I realized that people really needed that. And it wasn't like some healthy diet, that food that's kind of like scares you because you don't know if you get all the nutrients and it's going to be tasty. It's actually delicious and very fulfilling, very nourishing, deeply nourishing. People are always surprised when they eat my food. And I'm like, and then um my students my regular students were like we have so many handouts I want you why don't you create a, just write a book and put all your recipes in one place because I just have this folder and they're falling apart it's falling apart and I'm like oh I'm from Bulgaria English is my like third language but I okay let me try to write a book and then <laughs> I met a publisher a really renowned publisher and they took me on and my book became such a success it's in ninth ed edition now after five years that's <laughs> so, amazing yeah and after, you said after it's, five years yeah it's only fifth year, wow. ninth edition, uh, two languages and maybe more so <clears throat> um but you know so if you, you and then from there people were like we love your recipes where can we eat this food and the only place they could eat it was in my cooking classes <laughs> when they come and we always serve a full meal at the end of the class. So they said, why don't you open a restaurant? And we're like, okay. So then the opportunity came, a, a space opened up and a, a friend of ours who's a very successful restaurant, we had no idea how to run a restaurant. That's so hilarious. Like, I we really want monks. to dig into this story. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <You know? laughs> But then one of our clients uh, who loved our meals, he was like, um, I've, I've had successful restaurants in the East Village in New York with where we are now uh, for years. I can, I'll be happy to help you start a restaurant. We're like, okay, having this business partner gives us the confidence that we can do it. And then and then from there, things really took off. So with what many, years are many we talking pediments, about? Well, we I started teaching in 20, uh, 2009 in New York okay. City. Okay. 
And before we had a restaurant, we had it. So this is the evolution of our food service. Before we had a restaurant, we had a meal delivery service. So we had subscription meals. I would meet with our clients. By that time, I was also a certified Ayurvedic practitioner. So I would have a consultation with each client, check their pulse, assess their digestion and the health and what kind of food they need. And then we'll make these personalized meals and deliver fresh, hot meals, not frozen or <laughs> hot, freshly cooked food, cooked the same day, three times a day. And uh, our clients loved it. And we had people getting pregnant that couldn't get pregnant for years and people recovering from illness or just busy business people who had fresh food to stay healthy. So and then from there, they were like, why don't you just open a restaurant? Your food is so good. But it's not because just because of the food. It's also the need for um, people looking for healthy food. In New York City, there are a lot of people like that. <laughs> yeah, busy, looking for healthy food, don't have time to cook. This is an amazingly organic journey that you've been on. Yeah, a lot of hard work. I, I, uh... <laughs> If I were to do this again, I would definitely ask for more help because one mistake I made is that we just tried to do it all by, by ourselves, took a lot on ourselves, which then affected our health. There was a period which really affected uh, my relationship with my husband, who is my business partner. We do all of this together. Mm -hmm. And we were just so stressed out and so strained. And we were like, why are we just arguing? <laughs> It, it, for little things like petty things like that it's simply nerves so we had to kind of reset we had to take time for ourselves and reset before we continued and expanded so then the, at that very beginning part because a lot of our listeners are entrepreneurs they've got new ventures or they are aspiring entrepreneurs so I wanted to just dig into that first part when you started seeing scale from your cooking classes. So if you had to do that, I mean, in four months to go from four people to 500 is tremendous. And again, organically. So if you had to do this again, what re what recommendations or what advice might you give to folks who are seeing that much scale? How do you manage that? Um, we'll get a support system, establish a support system. Don't try to do it all by yourself. And and really not just support system, but spend time envisioning and planning. So business planning is not just about the numbers. It's a, really about aligning. Like for us, it took it took time to ask ourselves, do we want to do this for for a number of years in the future? does this align with who we are and what we dream to do in this world and who who we dream to be <laughs> not just doing but being um so are we in alignment so first finding your alignment is very important because when you start a business and then grow a business while keeping your alignment with who you are what you long to do what what's your calling in this world in Sanskrit, this is in Ayurveda, this is called dharma. So what are you called to do? Um, but not just doing. Doing comes from being. Is this work fulfilling for you? That's part of being. Does it make you happy? Even when it gets hard, <laughs> you want to keep going. It, it's In a way, it's kind of like a marriage relationship or a partnership because you become committed to each other. So the same with the business. My husband and I, we always joke that we don't have children, but um, our pro our business, our school, our students, the, the, this is our child. It, it really treat our business as a child and we fully committed to it. Um, so because then when you're aligned and committed like that, when things get hard and things will always get hard, it's just part of our <laughs> human experience. This is how we grow. When things get hard that you go back and you say, we chose to do this and you feel fulfilled and you feel satisfied, even in the hardship. Um, so I don't know if I'm answering your question about. That is really a great message. I think all, all entrepreneurs, as you said, 
a lot of our, our audience are entrepreneurs. And as we know, this entrepreneurship, the entrepreneurial journey is so unique and it is so difficult and it's so taxing in uh, very specific ways. So that's probably a message that anyone at any time on this entrepreneurial journey could stand to to hear again and again, really to breathe life into what you're doing and say, oh my gosh, is this futile? Just to remind yourself of of those words. Yes. And so the alignment is kind of like the anchor, right? This is what keeps us rooted in who we are, what we meant to do. And then however, it's like a tree, you have a strong root system. And then however it grows and whatever branches and fruits and leaves it gives, you cannot, you don't really know <laughs> what will happen. But staying rooted in your core values, I find this very important. So we talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, especially entrepreneurs uh, who have started or are endeavoring to start sustainable businesses, fair trade businesses, uh, businesses that uh, pay living wages, that really are mindful of their production process, etc. Mm. And that's a word and a concept that comes up again and again is really to be aligned to core values or I felt uh, my values reverberating me in such a way that I couldn't not start this business. Uh, yes. I think this is impossible. It's it's really important for this to be out in the world. And that's, that's a concept that comes up a lot. So that's interesting. Um, so I asked you earlier about this kind of the foundations of Ayurveda in general, when it comes to Ayurveda, Ayurvedic cuisine, are there some staple foods or some staple ingredients that are, basically everywhere uh, you could say so but the basic principle is to use what grows locally which it's the lo local food like the food that's grown with the water we drink and the air we breathe <laughs> we're part of the same part of our closed ecosystem is considered the, the best for our health it's hard to do that because we live in such a global environment nowadays and Yes, our rice is from Pakistan. It's organic basmati rice, but it's grown in a sustainable way that doesn't waste water. So that's important for us. Um, and it's also because it grows in good soil, it's very nourishing. Or we get mung dal, which is the mung beans, the split mung beans. Um, <clears throat> they come from India too. Um, Again, they're organic, grown in good soil. So you could say these are two very core staples in Ayurveda, but I would say in world cuisine as well, especially in plant-based cuisine. And another big part of Ayurvedic food is spices. So we use a lot of spices, even though our food may not taste pungent spicy, like it's not hot, hot, but it's very flavorful. And we use spices not just for flavor or for color. We use spices also for their medicinal benefits, for their digestive properties. So I would add a spice, to, for example, um, something that's rich in protein like lentils. I would probably add green or black cardamom, which helps with protein synthesis and protein digestion like that. So... But it also makes it really tasty. <laughs> so I, when I ask by when I make my recipes, I don't just think, oh, how can I can make this delicious? It's also how can I this is a really heavy to digest ingredient. What spices will support you in breaking it down so that you can assimilate this protein and transform it into energy? So that's so, how I am okay. thinking. Which, so spices which... double, sometimes triple duty in terms of yes. what they're doing for the food and that how what was your journey to becoming a chef was it again very very organic you just were cooking and liked cooking and and were a, a certified Ayurvedic practitioner and it just transformed like this or was it a really intentional like okay this is I'm I'm, I'm gonna go on this food journey now it's more of the first <laughs> the first story I, I learned how to cook in the ashram, in the yoga ashram, and uh, started when I was 18 years old. And I just became an intern because I really wanted to learn yoga. And 
I became an intern at the ashram and my first service was to help in the kitchen. So then I discovered my love for food and cooking and my interest in it. And um, and I was trained to be an ashram, the ashram cook and I did this service for several years. But what brought me to Ayurveda and cooking was when I was, especially when I lived in India, the climate was very harsh on me. <laughs> I, I, I loved it. It was amazing experience, but for my health, it wasn't very easy. The rainy season, the summers, oh my God, so hot. So um, every time I would get sick, I would go to an Ayurvedic doctor. The local doctor was an Ayurvedic doctor to help me. And this is when I started to realize, oh, this is how food is used as medicine. Because he would give me, he would say, eat this, don't eat this. And and it wasn't just giving me the medicine, right? In the Western world, we just get the pill to get take care of the headache. In Ayurveda, they give you little powders and little, <laughs> little herbal medicines. And it wasn't just that. He said, just taking the medicine is not enough. You have to adjust your diet because it is the diet that supports our healing the most. And I was so fascinated, first of all, impressed by the effect the treatment had on me and how holistic it was and how sustainable it was because it wasn't addressing just the symptoms. The treatment was also addressing the deep causes of the problem. So from there, I started studying Ayurveda and and really continued to develop my cooking skills and learn different different techniques. I never really went to a culinary school. I only went to a culinary school to learn knife techniques because in India, nobody teaches you knife skills. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even have the knives we use, <laughs> at, at least in the villages where I was. They used completely different types of cutting tools. But um, the... Um, yeah, so I went to learn that. I didn't go to a culinary school because I couldn't find plant-based, 100% plant-based programs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a lot of it was learning from plant-based chefs, like working with them and learning from them uh, and just my own learning and then incorporating then, I continue to study Ayurveda, um, but the teacher that I, really ignited that love for Ayurvedic cooking is Vaidya Mishra who passed away but I studied with him for about nine years and yeah it really transformed my life so part of it is also having um, teachers and guides along the journey yeah that is important something that's potentially not yeah, just an just a skill that you might pick up as as one would not, especially living in the Western world. Uh, Ayurvedic uh, culinary practices, having somebody that can that you can learn from, which is what you are doing for for so many people now. Um, if and you you mentioned a couple times the personal nature. Um, how would one go about figuring out what kind of quote unquote works best for their bodies or what what they should be consuming or in what quantity how would one do that is it would they see somebody like yourself or an ayurvedic practitioner as as you would a doctor to have you know kind of a a, a checkup done mm -hmm. um and then go see somebody like yourself at, at divyas uh to to supplement with food or how would you recommend that somebody like myself would just figure out what, what actually, what do I need to be eating? Yes. Well, if you're lucky enough to meet an Ayurvedic doctor or practitioner and have that detailed assessment, that's a great way to start. It's not, it's not easy to find for, especially if you don't live in a big city. So um, another way of doing it is simply you have to learn, see Ayurveda and Ayurvedic food, it, you have to learn a little bit about it. It's not just eating. It it goes, you have to understand the basic concepts and principles. And that's why I write books and teach classes because I help you understand the core, core concepts, which are actually, they make so much sense because 
the main goal of Ayurveda is to live in harmony with nature. We are part of nature and we start suffering really and we start feeling diseased when we disconnect <laughs> with our natural state of being and natural state of living. So Ayurveda is kind of bringing it back to flow with nature. And this happens by understanding, yes, your body type, and then what are you what are you in balances and then how you can bring yourself back to balance so to learn that yes just fine i mean there are body type quizzes out there <laughs> um, um I, i'm not a big fan of them but it it it's a fun start for a lot of people and then um there's yeah find a good book that inspires you i explain how to do that in both of my cookbooks, what to eat for how you feel. And the new cookbook is called Joy of Balance, but especially in my master classes. So, you know, I've been teaching for so many years and they were all in-person classes. And then people, especially when people started reading my books from all over the world, they would be like, how can I study with you? So we recorded, like we produced video classes so that people they can be accessible to people from all over the world and there I very and it's very visual and very entertaining so you can really learn how to determine and how to balance so the main principle of how to balance and how to figure out what to eat is to choose the opposite of how you're feeling so if you're feeling cold don't eat cold salads you know take foods out of the fridge don't eat don't drink ice cold drinks you know choose the opposite instead of salad have a soup like a hot soup have a tea like something warm because this will balance i mean we do this with our clothes right you feel cl cl cold and you put on a sweater <laughs> but we we don't do so much with we don't do it so much with our food but it's the same principle applies to food so if you feel very heavy eat light foods light to digest lighter foods if you feel very ungrounded and you've been running around and very very airy and unstrung eat something heavy and grounding something warm to kind of balance you that that's the main the main principle so if you you and your husband you started the first ayurvedic culinary training program in america is that still the case it's the only one still I think so. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, the reason we started this is because it didn't exist. And again, the need was there. Um, There's so many of my students who kept coming to every class I was teaching because they really wanted to grasp. Uh, they, they felt the tremendous changes by incorporating the principles of Ayurveda and food in their lives. And then they're like, we really want to go deeper. We want to learn this systematically. And um, I was very grateful because the first, so we developed a whole curriculum for a nine month long culinary training uh, based on the principles of Ayurveda. So it's not just learning cooking, it's learning all the theory of Ayurveda in relation to food and cooking. So that includes digestion, food properties, um, the six states of food and how they affect, affect our physical and mental emotional states, so many other things. So my teacher, Vaidya Mishra, he, he was there to teach the first one in 2015. <laughs> it was the first one. <laughs> and we only kept it to a very small group of people, of 12 people maximum. We had very small facility, very simple facility, but... We did it anyway. <laughs> and, you know, that's actually a lesson I learned because I'm kind of a perfectionist. I, I've i been working on being a healthy perfectionist, not get obsessive perfectionist, like a relaxed professional <laughs> perfectionist, if you will, <laughs> not rigid. I've been working on my rigidity for years. But, <laughs> but one thing that um, I learned is that you don't have to have everything perfectly set up to start doing what you want to do. That's a really good lesson. And we had, I mean, now we have an amazing teaching kitchen. And when I look back 
And I'm like, my God, how did we do that in one, one room and just folding tables and using pipes to extend the legs? And I mean, <laughs> the table legs, I mean, it was like, but we were just so happy doing this. And people somehow didn't mind the limited facility because they were the knowledge, what they were getting was so valuable. And and just the camaraderie and just being together and learning from each other was so rich and inspiring. So yes. <laughs> and sometimes the facility, it, it is important to have a good facility, but sometimes the facility may come second. Um so oh that's a really interesting thing. Okay, so two lessons here. One, it doesn't have to be perfect to start, which as a as a hope soon to be reformed perfectionist myself, I understand how difficult that is. So it doesn't have to be perfect for you to just start. And two, the facility maybe is secondary. So I wanted to also ask you about starting your restaurant because that in and of itself is a notoriously difficult endeavor. So I, you know, I love to know about finding the location. You said you you guys found somebody or somebody came into your your lives who was able to steer and guide you through this process. Um, but what about finding the facility, finding the the space, and setting this up? Yeah. So we were, uh, we were so our wellness meals, the meal subscription delivery meal subscription that we had was in the same building as the restaurant. It's called the Bhakti Center. And we were teaching our classes in that same facility. So one day we have class, the next day we make the meal. So we're using the same kitchen. And it became too small for us because we there was more and more clients were coming to us and we just wanted to have a more convenient. It's also, it was hard on all of us working in that kitchen, you know, it wasn't sustainable. Um, especially for expansion. So we started, uh, we just informed the director of the center at the time. And we, we said, yeah, we, we, we're going to start looking for another facility to continue our wellness meals. And at the base of the building, there is a restaurant space. And he said, well, this is becoming available for you in September. And he, they told us that in April of the same year. <laughs> He said, do you want to, to take over? And we were like, oh, okay, because it was it's a nice facility. So, and then one of our wellness meals clients was that business partner, restaurateur that I told you. And he said, yeah, if you want to take over, I'll help you. And we were like, okay, well, it feels like it's meant to be. <laughs> so we literally, so here's the night when the, the, the difficult part started because we had no funds we had literally three months to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars, the minimum capital we needed to start a restaurant. And then we had two months to renovate the dining room because the dining room had to look nice. Okay, it this is the front. And we gradually upgraded the kitchen and the basement area. So the work area that came gradually. We We kind of set the basics and then we improved gradually. But we wanted to have a really nice dining room, which is amazing. People come in and they're like, oh, this is so beautiful. They kind of forget that they're in New York City. It's very calming and uplifting. So, um, yeah, we we started with very small capital and we worked so hard for the first two years. I was literally 14 hours in the kitchen, <laughs> which took a toll on our health both my husband and I and but then more health came so we were you know somehow oh I don't know what to tell you Amber I my experience of doing business as an entrepreneur is that I have to have faith also that somehow things will work out and there is this invisible divine guidance that somehow it's always there for us. And we feel the higher power, God's presence, if you will. Um, and we often doubt ourselves. Uh, you know, I know I'm meant to do this, but it's so difficult. Am I really meant to continue to do this? <laughs> so the, the doubts will definitely come. But in the end, it always works out. So 
again staying aligned with our with with who we are what we're meant to do and i understand that there will time will come when it will be the end of it we'll, we'll definitely retire at some point hopefully we can hand it over to somebody and not just close the business but until then it's just um yeah, I see myself more as a steward to this whole thing. The project is way beyond me, way beyond my capacity. I'm just trying to serve without getting in the way too much. <laughs> so, because when I, in the beginning, when I just tried to do it all by like thinking that I am, it all depends on me. It just, that was the hard part. But when I opened up to, receive all the help and support that's available this is when things really took off that is an amazing passage uh to bookmark for all entrepreneurs and all of us in life that's uh, that's a really helpful passage um and you mentioned challenges that will definitely come and being part of the human experience and one thing that collectively we we did experience not too long ago, very recently, was was COVID, uh, as as a as part of the there are so few things that touch all of us as part of the human experience. And COVID was definitely one of them. How did you fare through COVID? What was your did you guys go back to delivering meals, or how how did you work through survive through COVID? Yeah. <laughs> well, COVID was a silver lining for us. First of all, we were so exhausted when the lockdown happened. We had we had to close the restaurant for two months, even though we were uh, we were essential service. We could have stayed open, but we really care about our team members, and it wasn't safe for them or we thought it wasn't safe for them to travel the subway and you know all that so just for the for their own health and safety we closed the restaurant for two months and first of all we we just took a break <laughs> we rested because we were so exhausted both my husband and I we were like oh that's great <laughs> and then um and then we conceived our product business because we already had this was already in the was in our plan to develop packaged products that you can cook they're not pre-cooked they you can cook and create fresh meals at home that are also rooted in ayurveda uh, so but we were kind of thinking to do this in a later stage of development of our business and when the lockdown happened, we were like, well, now that we arrested, our brains are working again, our cre creativity is really flowing. We outlined the products and I actually started working on the recipes and testing them. And, and then once we opened the restaurant again, uh, within a couple of months, we were already making test packages and, and hire the right person to help us really because we had no idea how to do a product business this is a completely different entity <laughs> there's so many regulations and so many things we had to learn but again hiring the right person or the right people the right team who understand this have experience with this was extremely helpful so yes we still we our restaurant is still recovering we're still not where we were before COVID financially speaking we're still struggling with that but um, that was the downside but there were many positive sides as well all right and just in the space of this conversation you've mentioned so many of the projects that you're doing uh, so I'm just going to do a little summary and you can fill in the blanks if I've missed any so you have your restaurant, which is a which is um, in the East Village, uh, in New York City. Uh, you have product business. Uh, you have your culinary training, and you're doing online uh, education as well. You have 
yes. classes, an online class, uh, resources, uh, different educational material. Is there anything else that I've missed? I mean, I'm writing oh, a books. cookbook. Yeah, I have a cookbook. I'm writing books. Yes. <laughs> and your cookbook. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that's a any one of those things could take uh, somebody's full field of vision. What does a I don't think it's fair to say a day in the life of Divya. So what about a week? What does a week in the life of Divya look like? <laughs> well, I'm really supporting everybody else on my team. This is how I, I see myself at this stage. But it may seem like many things, but they actually all link beautifully together. So, and each aspect of our business support the other ones. So in terms, not just in terms of marketing or in terms of client base or whatever you may seem from business terms, they all just from the flow itself. Like when you enter the Divya's house, you know, you go to one room and you learn about Ayurveda through the classes. You go to another room and you experience the food. And then you go to an on your exit, you get some products so that you can prepare that food at home and experience it at home. So this is kind of, this is, I, I see it as a very beautiful, coherent way of doing. And yes, it's a lot and we're still very ambitious. We're very idealistic, but we just feel that we're meant to do this. So we, we have to do it. And um, in the process, so for us, it's not just what what the results are. The main result and the main success for us is is the personal growth that happens in the journey. So if you ask me what success is, so to me, success is just who am I at the end of it all, right? Like, what did I become? Uh, how did I grow? How did I evolve as a human being? letting go of how did I learn to let go of resentment, of anger, of all these negative negativity uh, that I want to be free of? How, how did I become more compassionate? <laughs> how, 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 so, so that's the more kind, more thoughtful, more caring. Like this is what I want at the end of, of this whole business experience, this business journey. The results, the external physical results are temporary, you know. The fame is temporary, the money is temporary, but but those tangible results, and also the biggest success for me is when, and I I just feel so blessed that this happens to me every single day, literally. I receive an email or meet a person at the restaurant. People stop me on the street or in the store, and they're like, Oh my God, I've been, your, your cookbook changed my life. You know, your meals, I'm, I, I just gave birth and your meals is such a lifesaver. <laughs> you know, like things like that. When I hear the, how our work really helps people, this is the most, this is the biggest success. Even if I help one person, my life is successful. <laughs> You've such a fantastic way of looking uh, to, well, one, it seems like that's what I was thinking as you were talking. All of these different uh, projects that you're doing seem to be different manifestations of the, your central core journey, your core values, um, and your core project. And you have such a great way of looking at the journey of all of these, rather than the, you know, the 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 end destination. So, for again, for the entrepreneurs listening, um, do you have a, a specific set of advice or? approach to thinking about setbacks as well yeah well personally setbacks bring a lot of fear the fear of uncertainty so and the way i deal with the fear is i i have some friends i even have like healers that i talk to so find somebody you can talk to somebody who loves you unconditionally who doesn't have an agenda with you uh, somebody you trust and and really somebody you you can talk to because setbacks can really affect our mental health and we don't I don't think we speak enough about the importance of mental health for entrepreneurs um, in terms of 
not just going crazy <laughs> but but just the just dealing with the stress learning how to cope with with stress and learning how not to how to overcome the stressors like it, you can be in a stressful situation and not feel stressed out so talking to people and also my personal spiritual practice like meditation helps a lot uh, because it it keeps me anchored again uh, who am i what am i meant to do in this world <laughs> you know um and uh, reading spiritual books or just having the like the people i hang out with the what i'm hearing like like podcasts like this it's so meaningful it it's supportive of my journey rather than just being exposed to other things that are not necessar necessarily so, so being selective of what I let in in my world and what I keep outside like keeping my boundaries that way this this gives me the strength to to overcome setbacks and and the, the other thing is always coming back to my personal self-care so not 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 compromising self-care is very important to me and for you, that's, I really like what you said, that we don't spend enough time, not just contemplating, but talking openly about the mental health of entrepreneurs. Um, yeah, I 100% I agree. For you and your busy life and your schedule, what does self-care look like? Mm, well, nowadays is getting enough sleep because I didn't do, <laughs> I compromise on my sleep for years and it led to a chronic illness to an autoimmune disease and then I had to sleep for 12 hours a day you know because I was just so my body wasn't working properly so um getting enough sleep and really paying attention to what I eat yeah that's what I I'm that's what I'm all about so what I eat comes very easily to me because I am that's my that's what I do that's my thing it doesn't come easily for a lot of people mm -hmm. you know just grabbing a packaged something that's has so processed and it has who knows how many chemicals and artificial ingredients and or heating up a frozen meal in the microwave that's not that's not self-care to me it's like that's not the nourishing food that will be your companion in your in your progress in what you do keeping you healthy so if you if eating good eating well uh, that's healthy for you um doesn't come naturally for you then get help you know get help with that but don't minimize on your diet because our diet really what we eat creates the chemistry of your our body and our, also our mind the foods affect our mind as well so having the right chemistry again it's like the right fuel for your car <laughs> to take you wherever you want to go so that's really important and um yeah so my spiritual practice is part of my daily self-care because this helps me it does help me mentally and emotionally it, it keeps me calm <laughs> and keeps me keeps my mind peaceful and so that i can be focused uh in my work and also the relationship with my husband is very important so making time for that and you know it we learn the more in the most in a close relationship so being present to uh, the time when we're having an argument <laughs> and walking through the process um or or just just being there listening to each other every day so also because he's not just my husband he's also my partner he's my business partner who is actually running the whole business i'm just I'm creating everything, you know, the recipes, the classes, whatever, uh, the menus, all that. But he's the backbone of the business. So he deserves all recognition <laughs> as well. So what does the rest of 2023 look like for Divya's Kitchen? For Divya's Kitchen... Well, um, for those of you who are in New York and coming to the city soon, we're putting tacos on the menu. So Ooh. we have Ayurvedic tacos, plant-based, really delicious tacos with freshly made tortillas. 
um, non-GMO, organic corn, masa, and all that. Um, but we, I will be doing a lot of teaching. We're starting a level two of our culinary training, which is the professional level. It will go on. We're starting in a couple of weeks, and it will go on for nine months. We have over 45 students from all over the world signed up. It, uh, we're teaching it online with two in-person cooking immersions. And I will be speaking at the conference in Orlando. So those of you in the United States, there will be an amazing Ayurveda conference at the end of October, last weekend of October in Orlando. You can go to my social media, to my Instagram and see the the poster for that. National Consortium of Ayurvedic Medicine. Amazing. You will learn so much, meet amazing doctors and entrepreneurs in Ayurveda because Ayurveda as a business uh, and Ayurvedic products is really the new hip thing. And it's it's a very fast growing industry. And um, I'm excited about our products. We're on track to for them to be in Whole Foods in early next year. So we... <laughs> We are working on that right now. And yeah, we're going to be very busy. <laughs> it sounds like you're going to be exceptionally busy. <laughs> um, all right. We we've come to the rapid fire portion of our of our interview. I love this interview so much. Uh, but we're almost at the end. So if you could quickly answer me these three questions. What do you or maybe not quickly, it might not be quick. Uh uh your the biggest success that you have had to date the biggest success for me is the transformation of the people who've used or who, who who've come in touch with what we offer i love that and what about uh on the flip side what you would consider your biggest failure to date see i i kind of reprogram my brain not to think about failure but think about uh, failures and as a step to growth so I tried not to dwell in thinking that I'm a failure <laughs> well I would say the biggest challenge has probably been yeah not getting enough financial support on time so because yeah trying to trying to expand before the funds are available because that brings a lot of stress. So something I'm still learning and working on. Okay, fair play. And what about the most important lesson you've learned to date? The most important lesson is that to me, one of the most important lessons is that the success or the the success is not just in the end result, it's in the journey, but also in taking care of the people we work with. So it's not, yeah, it's that everybody is part of the success. Everybody is part of the journey. So we're in this together. And I cannot isolate, I cannot be the prima donna. You know? <laughs> I'm Divya. No, it's, I am there for my team and I'm there to, and I care about each one of them and I'm there to support them. Oh, I like that a lot as well. If you could get 85% of the world to adopt a single behavior, what would that be? Uh, do unto others as you do unto yourself, really. Mm -hmm. Be mindful, like, like everything we do, everything we do, affects every everything around us so mindfulness yeah being caring and mindful and respectful for everything and everybody else because we're all part of the same ecosystem and that's the key to sustainability to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and lastly where can we find you in real life online on social media where can we find you <laughs> Well, in real life, please come visit us at Divya's Kitchen at 25 First Avenue in New York City. Uh, we open seven, uh, six days a week. We close on Sundays. 
come for delicious meals. I'm not always there, so you might want to DM me on Instagram if you if you're planning to come because I'm teaching a lot, so I'm not in the restaurant so much all the time. Um, but yes, I we are online at devious.com and there you can look at our restaurant, you can menu, you can look at our products, you can look at our master classes. And um, we also have a great journal with a lot of online recipes and a lot more articles about Ayurveda and food. And maybe we can chat, see each other at the Farmers Union Square Farmers Market in New York City or in the streets of New York. I love talking to people in the streets <laughs> <laughs> or the grocery store. <laughs> Everybody who's listening right now, if you're in New York City, which a lot of our audience is, make sure to stop by. If you're not, uh, find Divya online at divyas.com. We'll link that in the show notes. Divya, thank you so much. This has been a fantastic conversation. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it too, Amber. And I, I so admire who you are and, and what you do. And just bringing this awareness and um, bringing confidence and inspiration to entrepreneurs, not just to succeed in their business, but also to succeed in their personal lives. I very much appreciate your work. Thank you for having me. Thank you for saying that very much. Uh, and thank you to everyone in the audience. Uh, see you on B1.